So I posted a video a while ago where I was talking about jiu-jitsu and boxing in a self-defense situation and answering a question from one of the viewers. And you know, the, vi the point that I made in the video I thought was very level-headed, which was if you're going to do jiu-jitsu for a self-defense purpose at some point, right, if that's something that's on your mind, it would probably be a good idea to do some striking just to have a well-rounded skill set to draw upon should you need it. I thought it was a very level-headed approach. Now, in the comments, most people were pretty cool, but there's always those martial arts dorks out there, and I call them dorks jokingly because it's like people who don't train martial arts that want to give their expert opinion, or it's people that train in one particular martial art and they want to sort of poo-poo on other martial arts because theirs is better, right? Opposed to maybe trying other ones. And one of the comments that came up multiple times, and I see this all the time with uh, jiu-jitsu, it doesn't work against multiple opponents, therefore it's useless in a street fight situation, right? The multiple opponents thing, it comes up all the time. And so I wanted to wrap with you guys today about that idea of multiple opponents in martial arts. So if you're talking about jiu-jitsu with multiple opponents, saying it's useless against multiple, multiple opponents or it's not designed for multiple opponents, I agree with you, right? I mean, I would not go into a fight situation willingly against multiple opponents and try to use jiu-jitsu in the very rigid way which in which you're thinking. I mean, you can think of the great Hicks and Gracie, right? In his book, Breathe, he was talking about at one point when he was, uh, when he was younger, he was faced with a group, like a large group of people that wanted to attack him. Now, he didn't all of a sudden take the person down, establish a mountain and submit them, or grab an object and then do like a Jackie Chan fight scene against everybody, right? He turned and ran. He got out of the position because that wasn't, those were not good odds, right? And he said he got out of the situation and ran from it. The, the, you know, the Hicks and Gracie, right? The, 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 the dude that was like a mythical jiu-jitsu guy, he got up and ran against multiple opponents. It's, um, it's like one of my friends, Todd Fox. So Todd Fox came on our podcast, the jiu-jitsu podcast, in case you didn't know I had one. And he's in the uh, sort of protection sort of space, right? He protects uh, VIPs and protects... Uh, uh, celebrities and things like that. He's trained in multiple martial arts. He was a Marine, all this stuff. And he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. And he said it very well when he said that on our podcast, when it comes to multiple opponents, no martial art is going to be, is going to ensure a, a positive outcome, right? No martial art is going to be a hundred percent effective. Really what you're doing is you're training your martial arts so that you can increase the odds of a positive outcome. That's the deal, right? You train all these different martial arts, you do learn all these different skills and tools. So this way you can have a, an increased chance of a positive outcome because when it comes down to a street fight situation, nothing is certain. I mean, nothing certain even on the mat, but of course, there's more variables when it comes to an actual self-defense or street fight situation. Now, that said, there are some things to consider when we're talking about martial arts and jiu-jitsu in particular being used in a self-defense situation. So here's an example from one of my students years ago. So years ago, I had one of the, we have, we have several police officers training here, and one of the guys that used to train with me, he was training here at the time, he came up to me one day and said, Chewy, you and jiu-jitsu in the gym saved my life. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he ended up telling me the story where he went into a home, he was called in there, into this home, and as soon as he walked in, he was jumped by like three smaller dudes. Now he's a big, strong guy, but there's three dudes on him, right? He's got one grabbing his neck, he's got one hugging his, his, his uh, primary arm, his dominant arm, and he's got one guy grabbing his leg. So he's got three dudes on him all at once. And he said that immediately he broke the grip off the wrist, pulled the grip off of his neck. Like, and then from there, the guy's still hugging his leg. He stuffed the head, got out of the place, was able to make distance, and then he could call for backup, draw his weapon at that point, right? And so he said that, you know, he doesn't know what would have happened to him. I mean, because the guy was grabbing and trying to pull his, drive his form into his neck. Three dudes, who knows what's going to happen? Now, in that situation, he didn't do jujitsu in the rigid form of like, okay, I'm going to take the person down. And as soon as I take them down, I'm going to position before submission, establish side control, knee slide them out, and then I'm going to arm bar them. He didn't do that. But everything that he did was grappling. He broke the grip. He pulled this grip off and protected his neck against the submission. And then he stuffed the shot and got out of the situation, right? That's all jujitsu. That's all of that is, is grappling based. It's just used in a different situation. This is, this is kind of where I'm getting to. When you get into a street fight situation, it's not going to be like when you see these like scenarios where the guy's like, hey, buddy, like this kind of thing. You can't count on that. There's so many variables and things are just gonna happen, it's chaotic. And when it comes down to it, you're gonna draw upon whatever skills you have and you're gonna have to basically improvise with them. You're just gonna have to use them in whatever way, fashion you can use them, whether that's grappling, striking, or even with your weapons. I know a lot of people say, I don't need jujitsu, I got a gun, right? Well, that's nice, but what happens if you can't make distance? Distance is a very important thing if you're gonna draw your firearm. If you're here and all of a sudden people are swarming you and you can't pull that, arm, that gun out, 
you know, you're in a bad spot. And even with the gun, you're going to need to train that thing. If you think you're going to be able to like just put it on your hip and then you're in all of a sudden you have some guy running at you and you think you're just going to like pull it out like perfectly, it doesn't work that way. You have to train with that weapon just like you do with your grappling. And so that's the whole thing that I'm trying to get into it because anytime I think of like martial arts being used against multiple opponents and it being specifically for multiple opponents, a lot of times you see these like, it's basically role playing. You know, you'll see like guys like doing a keto or something where they're like running at them and they're running at, I don't, I've never seen anyone run at someone like they're going to like hammer fist them over the head and then the guy throws them and they sweep over <laughs> or the best are like the ones that are like where the, uh, the cult leader. I mean, I mean, martial arts instructor, where like the person's running at him and then a person's screaming and then all of a sudden the, the instructor at the last minute gives them a quizzical eyebrow and like a twitch of their finger and all of a sudden the person's like doing this and they fall down shaking convulsively because they've been brainwashed so much. Again, I know jiu-jitsu has its, its culty problems at times too, but nothing like that. I've never seen anything quite that crazy, right? At least there's, there's some steep, there, we, we, we at least roll with each other, so there's some reality there, right? But that's completely divorced from reality. And so again, the point that I'm making in this is I don't believe really any martial art is truly designed for multiple opponents because there's too many variables, right? There's too many things to do. Now, you can train different ways and you can do all this different training and I've seen different martial arts, everything from Krav Maga to Jiu Jitsu to striking, all that stuff and you, you throw it together and what you're trying to do in the end is understand that you're not going to be able to have a positive outcome 100%. Nothing is certain in life, right? That's period. But that you're training these different martial arts and you're trying to give yourself a wide array of skills and tools so this way when something does happen, should it happen, you have a better chance of a possible or, or a uh, better chance of a positive outcome. That's it. And so just my idea that I'm sharing with you today, guys, um, let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about jujitsu and grappling and other martial arts, martial arts in general against multiple opponents. And anything that I said that you want to comment on, comment down below and I'll join the conversation with you. And uh, guys, as always, thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you next time.